Hi everyone. If you're new to this channel, I'm Phil, co-founder of EZA. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking with Nam Noeng, who is a current engineering student at Queen's College, Cambridge. She was previously at CLC and then moved to Westminster for the sixth form. So we're going to be talking about what life was like at Westminster and CLC. And I went to St. Paul's, so we'll be talking a little bit about life at St. Paul's and comparing and tra contrasting the two. So we'll start off maybe with a little bit of an introduction from Nam Nguyen. Uh, obviously, I just gave a very brief introduction, but you can explain, Nam Nguyen. Uh, thank, you, thank you for being on board as well. Thank you for coming on and talking to everybody. Um, but yeah, why don't you explain a little bit more about your experiences, how long you spent at each, at each school and what you're doing now. So my name is Nam Neng. I spent about five years at CLC from year seven to year 11. And then I moved to Westminster for sixth form. Okay, perfect. And you're now studying in engineering at Queen's, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm now in second year. Just, we'll just start off with talking about the locations. So St. Paul, I went to St. Paul's and it's based in Barnes. There's loads of space, loads of grounds. Um, they've got loads of different sports because it's right by by the river as well so rugby rowing are both really big sports football in the summer they've got tennis courts and also a rackets court if people haven't heard of rackets it's sort of a very old-fashioned uh, sport where you've got one of those long tennis rackets and pretty much a golf ball that you hit around against concrete walls it's an indoor sport we also have fives um, at st paul's uh, so Nam Neng, um, at Westminster, do you do you have a lot of sports? Because I know that when we look at Westminster, it seems to be right in the centre of London. So is, is there the possibility? There aren't that many fields in central London, are there? Um, yeah, we have loads of sports as well. There's a huge sports field that students can play basketball, um, football, or rounders, which seems to be very popular. A very popular sports in summer. Um, apart from that, there's also a shooting range that cool. you can use right on top of one of the scholars' boarding houses and right opposite the House of Parliament. So I've done that before for my sixth form year as well. It's very fun. That's yeah. really cool. I mean, who, who would have thought that there's yeah, shooting in one of the sort of a, a central London school? Is it sort of yeah. air, air rifles or what, how does it work? Um, it's air rifles. So it's in, in, on top of one of the boarding houses. And you just walk up there and then wear shooting jackets and earmuffs and you, you just start shooting the target. And wow. you have to be careful about shooting the ceilings or the floors, or, but there'll be instructions there. Um, other sports are there are also swimming, um, cross country, hockey, tennis. But these sports, you have to travel. These sports are not right in the like walking distance away from school. So you might have to sit on a coach or car. And also another one of our very popular sports is also rowing, which is yeah. similar to simple oh. and cricket. And uh, people take rowing and cricket very seriously at Westminster. Um, and quite a few students would be recruited by US universities every year uh, for being a good rower. And they also participate in the Hemi's Regatta uh, every year as well. Yeah, that's cool. I was at Henley before as well, because um, of, of course at St. Paul's we're a big rival of Westminster, especially yeah. in rowing. Yeah, um, and rowing, rowers and cricketers also get special blazers at school for being good at their sports. Whereas uh, CLC, it's quite different from Westminster because it's not right in the centre of London, it's in the centre of Cotswold, so there are loads more field space. So when I was there, there were loads of sports that required a lot of field space. For example, lacrosse, hockey, cross country, and these are right in the walking distance away from school. In fact, like some of the boarding houses are just two minutes away from the sports field. Uh, so usually very sporty people would tend to choose those boarding houses. Um, apart from that, CLC also had loads of indoor sports such as swimming pools, they have their own college, own swimming pool and um, their own sports centre, which is called the Health and Fitness Centre, okay. which you can also do sports in there. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wide variety at both schools. Probably the difference, main difference between CLC, Westminster and St. Paul's then is that at Westminster, you have to travel quite a lot for the sports. Would, that, would I be right in saying that? Yeah, you have to travel for the sports that requires field spaces. 
uh, okay. such as hockey, you have to travel or swimming. But Westminster also has a sports center where you can dial within walking distance. So anything like rock climbing or badminton or something that's like indoor would be close to school, but whereas something that requires a lot of space would be a bit farther away from school. Okay, cool. So yeah, I mean, lots of sports available. Um, is there enough time to fit it all in? I, when I was at St. Paul's, I was doing rowing and I found it was actually okay, uh, but maybe partly because everything was so close. So for example, to get to the river was just a two minute walk. So we would finish our lessons at 12.35. Within five minutes after we changed, we'd then be in the boathouse. So it was pretty simple. How does it then work at Westminster and CLC? Does it, do you find that it's difficult to sort of fit those all in? Um, I, can, I see all my friends doing uh, loads of sports and they seem to fit in well fine with the timings. In fact, one of the most um, one of the smartest people at Westminster can fit in sports, music, and any extracurriculars, and being very good at academic as well. Um, rowers tend to have less time because they train both mornings and in the afternoons, and also training after. So, I think that's the most intense sports out of everything. But apart from that, that's fine. And these people tend to be not just rowers, but People who are all rounded seem to be very attractive to US universities as well. Yeah, I guess doing all of that sport helps to create, helps to generate a lot of discipline, right? Yeah. For me, I see sports as something that I do to reduce stress. Um, and I'm, I tend to like play more music and fit in extracurricular that way as well because I like music more, a bit more than sports. All right, yeah, so I mean, tell us a bit more about music then. Uh, there are probably buildings on site where you can do music. At St. Paul's, we have something called the Wadden Hall, where there's a, there's a, a big music concert hall, and then they have uh, little music rooms that you can go and book up as well if you're just trying to pla practice with some friends or also to have private music lessons. Yeah, we also that, have that at Westminster. It's about two minutes walk away from school. Um, from the main school site, which is right next to one of the boarding, all girls boarding house, actually. Um, you practice in there um, and the, you have music lessons in there as well. So when I was at Westminster, I was also part of the choir. Right. So it's really cool because you get to sing in Westminster Abbey every Monday and Fridays. Um, and you also practice in those music practice rooms as well. We've also performed at the Barbican Centre before. Oh, wow. Uh, as part of the school. Now, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to sing at Westminster Abbey. We got to sing at St. Paul's Cathedral for Colour Day. Uh, so I don't know which one's better. I guess, uh, it, yeah, depends yeah. On which, one, which one you prefer, Westminster Abbey or, or St. Paul's Cathedral. I've never sang in the St. Paul's Cathedral before, so I'm not really sure, but I know that some of the few few people from CLC that are in the choir have sang in um, St. Paul's before. I think they're both equally very good. Yeah, 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 for sure. I guess it's just to do with which school is associated to which one. So Westminster, yeah. obviously right next to Westminster Abbey, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Did, you, did you just walk there, I guess? Yeah, you, so you walk there about half an hour earlier than when the service starts. So I can't remember what time the service starts, but I think the service is at nine and you go into Westminster at Abbey at 8.30 and start singing with uh, the head of choir and then you start performing at nine. Okay, cool, Everybody. yeah, so a bit of a warm up beforehand. Yeah. Nice, yeah, so you, so you touched on earlier about how you had mixed boarding houses at Westminster. I know that the, the, sort of the way it works at Westminster is quite different because you've got St. Paul's, which is uh, fully boys school. There's also St. Paul's girls, but it's a, for all intents and purposes, it's a completely separate school. And then you've got CLC, which is pretty much just a, just a girls school, right? But yeah. then Westminster, they've got some sort of interesting way of um, sort of, they, they have an interesting approach to the mixed schools idea, yeah. uh, where they sort of bring in a certain number, is it a third of girls in the penultimate years? Oh, it's like, it's, it's um, the ratio would be one girl to two boys in sixth form. Okay. Uh, prior to sixth form, it would just be all, all boys school and then girls come in in sixth form. There are also uh, one all girls boarding houses and there are the rest are either 
boarding houses and all boys boarding houses. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah. So, so you've got boarding. a mix. And it, so it's almost similar to the way that the, some of the Cambridge colleges are set up, where they have some all female colleges and then some uh, mixed ones. But I guess at Westminster, then you also have the all male ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, like that. Yeah, um, even the all males one, the, uh, there will still be girls, but there will just be day girls instead of boarding boarding girls. Okay. Um, but that, so, and also the girls, all girls boarding houses also have day boys, but not boarding boys. Okay, because I always thought the Westminster was a fully boarding school. Is that not right? Oh, no. In fact, most of the people are actually day pupils. Um, there's not that many boarders. But all scholars were, um, all scholars will have to board, so all the scholars will be boarders. Okay, and that's including same as same for girls as for boys. They're all they're all boarders. Yeah, same for girls for scholars. Okay, cool. And and there's also a scholar boarding houses, boarding houses. All oh, right, so um, all of the scholars are in one single building. Yeah, and that's the building with the shooting range at the top. Oh wow! So what, what's that like then? If everybody is, so you. Is it similar to, I know Winchester have a similar, similar system where they sort of have what they call the commoners in certain sort of the normal boarding houses and then they have the scholars in a separate scholars house. Is that right? Um, yeah, there's only one scholars boarding house and uh, all the scholars are in there and the rest is just normal. Yeah. Normal. Okay. And do they, have, do they also have special, special dress to wear or not? Um, they have to wear special dresses for special services um, and they also have to attend uh, special services. I'm not really sure what this is, but they sometimes have to come in on the weekends um, on some random day to dress up in these red and white robes and go to some service. Oh, well, that's well. quite cool though. Very traditional. I, I mean, there are all of these different traditions. At, at St. Paul's, when, you, when you're a senior scholar or if you're a John Collett scholar, then you also get a, a fish to wear on your blazer. I guess it's to do with sort of, um, it's, it's an old tradition because the school was founded yeah. by John Collett. And I guess the, the, the school doesn't separate people necessarily whether they're, between whether they're a scholar or a, uh, just a normal student, but they, they, they're sort of, I guess, a, a couple of idiosyncrasies. I guess the ties, so boys have to wear ties and the colour of your ties can, you can tell which house they're from or what, if they're prefect or if they're scholars with the colour of their tie. So okay. I guess you recognise them that way. Yeah, yeah. At school, at St. Paul's, they also have what's called club colours and sports colours. So if you yeah. win, if you're particularly good at the sport, you'll be awarded uh, what they call a colour. And then you have a you'll have a, like a, a tie which has a you know if you're good at rowing you'll have a rowing boat on it or if you're good at fives you'll have some sort of fives glove on it. Yeah, we also have that for both uh, Westminster and CLT. So um, we have house ties and the house sports tie. So if you participated in a sports event um, in the house, then you'd also be awarded a house sports tie. I've only managed to get a music tie. Um, but not really that many sports side. At CLC, we have badges instead. So girls wear blazers, and um, they once they won sports or like player of the match, they might be able to get a badge from the sports teacher, and they're yeah. like they're awarded every year, every term, um, and they have to go on stage to get this prize. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So. Other people who walk around with sort of their blazers filled with different badges, if they've collected them all. Yeah, um, yeah, there, there are people like that as well, <laughs> with prefects and everything. So some people also put it um, on their jumper, and if you have too much, it will just hang down their jumper so that because it's too heavy. Yeah, but yeah. No, that's cool. Then, so a lot of people, I guess, the, the competition at all of the schools is going to be really. Um, really intense and everybody's working really hard, everybody's driven. A lot of people, as you said, are doing sports and music and everything. Do you yeah. think that um, there's, a, there's a big difference between how, how hard you worked at CLC versus at Westminster? Or you know, what, what would you say the main difference is? Because people often think about Westminster as being sort of the place mm -hmm. where students work really, really hard. 
maybe at St. Paul's, they see the field and they think, okay, you know, they're working really hard, but at the same time, they have more time for sports as well. Well, you know, from in your experience, since you changed between the two, since you went from CLC to Westminster for sixth form, what did you maybe see as the, the differences being? Like, was it academics or were there other things? Um, mainly the environment. Uh, the environment of people at Westminster, they work hard, harder and longer hours all the time. Um, it might be because I'm also in sixth form, whereas yeah. when I was in CLC, I was in junior school. Um, people tend to work about three to four hours. They tend to do their homework about, well, I tend to do my homework about three to four hours a day in sick form, but then I try to finish, it might be more than this, but I try to finish everything before the weekend so I can get uh, my weekends free. But, and also when I was in sick form, I was applying to US universities as well. So some of the time were also spent on um, doing US like practicing US admission tests. So yeah, but whereas in Remove, we actually get a lot more work. Um, it also depends on your teacher. Uh, my physics teacher started giving us uh, a lot more homework, not a lot more homework, a lot more challenging homework. And I could be working about three to four hours again, and but only achieving uh, about maybe one question or less than that. Wow. Um, depending, depending on how much effort you want to put in. But other students will also be struggling as well, and some of them might give up, so it will probably take less than that time. Um, but we help each other, and we try to do as much as possible before we ask for more help in class. Yeah, yeah but that's interesting, because when you're at a day school, you don't necessarily have the teachers with you when you're doing homework, you go home, you do it. So a lot of people have tutors to help them. But when you're at boarding school, you don't have that. You're sort of in there. You're you're given a certain amount of time, or you're you're given a set homework time where you have to do everything. Uh, did you did you say before that you uh, at, at Westminster you can ask teachers while you're at the school, so they stay behind after school is actually finished, and you, when you're doing your homework as part of the sort of in your boarding house, you can go and ask them. So in boarding houses, tutors go to. Um, just be the tutors of the day in their houses to register people's name as well. So if the tutors are off your subject, you can always go and ask them about any questions. And some day girls actually stay, so the school library finishes at, uh, closes at 10 p.m. Some days people actually stay so that they could work in the library and then come and ask tutors that are on duty um, if they have any questions. Uh, so different boarding houses have different tutors on duty every day and you can maybe contact your friends to see if, what subject teachers are on duty that night and you could walk to another boarding house to ask questions if you're stuck and it's really helpful. Yeah, yeah, I mean, did you have something like that at CLC as well? Uh, no, CLC boarding houses doesn't have teachers at all, they just have matrons um, that are meeting. There are no teachers saying so. It might be because teachers probably live close to school at Westminster, close to school or in school um, when they're at Westminster, which means if they come and register at like finishing at 10 p.m., they could easily walk back to where they live. That's why I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. And which one would you say you prefer? Which system? Like the, the CLC one where maybe you're you're with a matron and you, you have to sort of do it on your own or maybe you ask friends or the Westminster version where you're in the library and you have maybe a tutor who you can ask or well it's called a tutor but it's a teacher who you can then yeah. go and ask um, when, you, when you're stuck on something. Um, I'd say I can't choose for this because when I was young I preferred to be at CLC but when I'm older I also prefer to be at Westminster because I can imagine me getting very stressed if I get uh, if I was in the work environment like Westminster since I was young, as well. And I think CLC uh, has a more homely boarding field, so it's more like you yeah. think like mothers looking after you, whereas Westminster is more like you looking after yourself, like university. Yeah. But maybe a bear to help you. So I guess I would I would still choose CLC when I was young, and then Westminster when I was older. But I guess I'm a. Okay. I was younger anyway. 
That's really interesting. So different different sort of schools for different stages in your well, academic career, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And how, how much, I mean, out of interest, maybe this is a difficult, difficult question to answer because it was a while ago, but how much do you think you prepared for the Westminster exam? Because, I mean, there's a lot of competition to get in, especially at sixth form for the girls, uh, since there's only a ratio of one to two, right? There's probably tons of tons of students going for a, a very small number of places. Like, how hard was it? And what was the, the application process like? Um, so I'll talk about the admission test before the interview. Okay. The admission test, I actually did not prepare tailored to the admission test that much. I was just revising I was just revising the GCSE exam so that I could do the GCSE content and understand it as much as I can. Um, but I, 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 I'd say like about two months in advance, I'd probably read through like, oh, so I did physics, maths and chemistry and further maths. Um, two months before the exam, I'd probably read through like physics and chemistry textbooks see the concepts that are like interesting on the columns on the side of the textbook to see if there are any interesting facts that can be linked and this way you can link loads of physics topics together and see if you can apply them to another another like topic which this is what they kind of asked in the exam so they i'm guessing they're asking you to apply the knowledge and I'm just trying to practice this before the exam, the admission test. The interview I prepared a bit more and it was very scary um, because I didn't know what's going to come up. It's actually quite similar to the Cambridge interview in that quite scary and the environment seems very intense. But in the end, when I walked out of the interview, I didn't think that I was going to get in that sort. But then in the end, I think it turned out well. Yeah. yeah. That's what they say yeah. about Cambridge as well, right? When you have a tough interview, it's probably gone well because they're actually challenging you rather than letting you letting you go. And that's also because you're sort of, your mind is thinking, right? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't answer some of the questions in the interview. interview. Um, yeah. So it, was I, all, it was all OK. <laughs> it was all okay. I, I gave very questioning answers, I think. Very off topic. Not off topic. Very quirky answers in the interview. So, yeah. Well, I guess they, they like that. I think that's why I was worried as well, because that's that might not be the right um, answer. Okay, yeah. Well, no, that, that's all really interesting. I mean, what would you say were two of your most interesting experiences, either at CLC. Well, we'll start with CLC and then we'll go on to Westminster. Like, I don't know, something interesting yeah. that happened or a fun fact. Um, uh, at CLC, I've met Malala before. So okay. she's a prize winner. She came for one of the uh, Leavers talk, I think. And another interesting fact would be we had a fireworks display for our Leavers ball saying CLC Beavers. I thought that was very special. Um, for Westminster, interesting fact would be, um, I was in the same house in, as Nick Clegg. Uh, oh, really? and, okay. Cool. Uh, in boarding house as Nick Clegg. And I've also met the Queen before. Oh, wow. So you actually met her. That's amazing. Was that why very, you were singing? Sorry? Was that through your singing? Uh, no, it was very briefly. She came for the Commonwealth uh, service at Westminster Abbey and lots of the royalty came and we were just there. Oh wow, so that's a perk. I mean they need to advertise that Westminster better then. You get you get a chance of meeting the Queen. Yeah, you get the chance. Actually scholars get the chance to talk to them as well. Um, talk to the Queen because she came to the Jubilee Gallery opening. Oh wow. Um, which is the new gallery in the Westminster Abbey. And all the scholars have to go line up and meet the Queen. So did yeah. you, what did you say to her when you met her? Oh, I'm not a scholar. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think they talked a tiny bit. That's what my yeah. friends Yeah, yeah no, that's, I mean, that's, that's cool. Any, anything you can say to the Queen, I'm sure you know, it's going to be well received. Um, I'm sure they were, they were very polite as well. And, um, yeah. 
Because I mean, it just sounds it sounds so amazing that you have that opportunity to actually be there, say hi to the queen, even speak with her. Yeah, that's um, cool. the, the queen also came to because I was in Queen's College. The queen also came to our college before as well. Oh wow! Um, that, so that's when, Nick Clegg's College. Oh, oh no! I mean, college in Cambridge. Oh, college. That was a, so you're yeah. So you're at Queen's, and she she visited there as well. Yeah, she also visited there before last summer as well. Oh wow! <laughs> so you're good friends with the Queen then? <laughs> Not really. There are lots of people trying to see her all the time. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, no, that has been a, an amazing sort of introduction and compare and contrast between Saint Paul, Westminster, and CLC. Thank you so much for your time, Nanang. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that's. I'm sure all of our viewers will be, you know, really happy to to uh, heard heard your experiences. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thank you to everybody for watching as well. Um, if you have any questions for Nam Noeng or for me, just place them in the comments below, and we'll make sure to answer them. Uh, apart from that, that's it from us, uh, and we'll hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye now. Yeah. Thank you for listening.